One of the best things about Avatar The Last Airbender is how many different tones it manages to balance. You've got an action-adventure about saving the world, but also a pretty light-hearted comedy that isn't afraid to be silly. There's tons of action, and yet it's not afraid to slow down and build out its characters. It makes the show feel a lot more layered and complex, while the contrast between the silly and serious moments make both of them more effective. And I believe there's no better example of this juggling act than in the season 2 episode, Tales of Ba Sing Se. See, this whole section of the show kind of, for lack of a better term, has no chill. Just a few episodes before, the gang barely escaped a collapsing underground library while losing their furry friend Appa to a group of kidnappers in the process. They soon arrive in the bustling city of Ba Sing Se, only to discover that a group of secret police has kept the existence of the global war under wraps for decades. Hell of a plotline, I know, but I think it was the right call to slam the brakes for an episode and give us some smaller scale, more character driven stories. And that's exactly what it does, perfectly using a series of vignettes to not only provide some much needed levity, but also to check in with where our characters are emotionally. So today, I thought I'd look at these stories, and why I'm so in love with this little amalgamation of an episode. The first story follows Toph, as we see her go to the spa with Katara and reflect on her personal relationship with fashion and beauty as a whole. See, Toph has kind of always been a tomboy, always acting more like a giant meathead than a small blind girl. In fact, her character was originally supposed to be a large muscly man until the creators changed the design. And yet, despite that, despite being seemingly free of the crushing societal expectations placed on women to be stunningly beautiful, Toph seems genuinely hurt when a group of girls makes fun of her makeup. She says she's fine with being different because she knows who she is, but it's made obvious, really for the first time in the series, that this knowledge still takes a toll on her. At the end of the day, she's very aware that she's different from your typical girl, and constantly feeling like you're failing people's standards, regardless of how arbitrary they are, can be very tiring. Toph can often seem invincible. I can probably count the battles she's lost on one hand. But by giving her the space to be vulnerable, this story tells us that underneath her tough exterior is a regular kid one who's a lot more emotional than we've previously seen. And we wouldn't have gotten this depth to her character if the show hadn't been willing to slow down down so much. I don't really think you can do this story in an episode where they're actively fighting the Fire Nation. And it's a large part of why I love Tales of Ba Sing Se so much. It just allows us to really check in with our characters in new ways. And now it's time to move on to the tale of Iroh. Brace yourselves. Uncle Iroh has always been one of my favorite characters, not just in Avatar, but across media as a whole. There's just something so satisfying in seeing this wise old sage slowly pushing the hot-headed Zuko towards the path of good. In fact, he's so effective in this part that it's easy to forget that he himself was once a big bad Fire Nation general. In the story, Iroh spends his day showcasing all of his best qualities, helping everyone he comes across. He helps a flower to bloom, stops a baby from crying by singing it a song, and even provides fantastic life advice to a man who tries to mug him. And this all makes it even more heartbreaking when it's revealed that today is the anniversary of Iroh's son passing away in the war. His unrestrained grief and tears tell us exactly why he changed so drastically, why he now dedicates himself to peace and helping others. We can see why he's so devoted to helping Zuko turn his back on the Fire Nation and find peace, because he's trying to avoid repeating the past. Although we knew enough about Iroh's backstory previously to mostly piece together his motivation, Tales of Ba Sing Se makes us confront it directly for the first time bringing the audience face to face with the horrible consequences of war. In a world where death is usually only hinted at or glossed over, and things can often seem silly and cartoony, seeing the tragic effects of the conflict and its impact on this nice old man is shocking. And crucially, it reminds us how high the stakes really are. It really does go a long way in balancing the tone of the show by showing us the deep sorrow that's present in even one of the most goofy and happy-go-lucky characters. Capped off with a tribute to Iroh's original voice actor, and we have one of the most important and beautiful sequences in all of Avatar. And next, we have a mostly silly story about Aang herding a group of animals through the streets of Ba Sing Se, trying to deliver them to their brand new zoo. And although this may seem like it would give the audience tonal whiplash, I think it's handled pretty well, but more importantly, I think that's kind of the point. 
Aang's story, as well as Sokka's tale directly after, which is even sillier, centering around a high Q battle, both play a very important role. They provide much needed levity, which is good because I'm still crying from Iroh's story. They tell the viewer that although the world may seem all doom and gloom, there's still happy stuff too that's worth fighting for. In a very subtle way, the combination, tonally consistent as it may seem, strengthens the audience's resolve and desire to see the good guys win. And this lighthearted tone is mostly carried over into the incredibly adorable tale of Zuko. Here, we get to see Zuko of all people act like a normal teenager and go out on a date. And I adore this story, not just because it's adorable, although it is, but because it's such an important part of Zuko's character arc. Zuko has been hell-bent on nothing but capturing the Avatar for the whole series, but here we get to see him relax a little, and consider what life would be like if he followed his uncle's lead and started a normal, peaceful life. And although he does run away from the date at the end, I get it, girls are scary, he nevertheless begrudgingly tells his uncle that it was nice. Could you imagine Zuko from season 1 not only going on a date, but having a good time? Being all bumbly and awkward, and even going so far as to risk being discovered as a firebender to make a girl smile? I definitely can't. And again, it's why I love Zuko's arc in Bossing Say so much, because we as an audience really get to see Zuko start to turn towards the light. And even if it's just a little, and even if it's not permanent, it's still so satisfying to see him realize there's more to life than pleasing his father. Then we finish with yet another silly story about Momo bouncing around Ba Sing Se. I think tales of Ba Sing Se might just be the Avatar creators at the height of their storytelling powers. Although at a glance it may look like nothing special, just a bunch of small-scale unconnected stories mashed together, to me it perfectly encapsulates what makes Avatar so special. On paper, it shouldn't work. There are too many dramatically different tones, and some of them don't really seem to fit their respective characters that well. Given the sweet romance story to Zuko and having the happy-go-lucky Iroh shoulder the story about death, all while our main character Aang doesn't really do much of anything, it doesn't really seem to fit. And yet it does, because the writers never let the tone go too far in one direction, always balancing the comedic and the tragic. And the character's seemingly mixed-up roles demonstrates the show's commitment to providing each character with depth. Nobody's allowed to just be one thing. They could easily have let Toph forever be this stoic badass, but showing us her vulnerable side makes her seem more real. And we get this for all of the characters at one time or another throughout the show. Even the goofy Sokka has to grow up and become a warrior later on. Avatar shouldn't work. It's a story about war and genocide mixed with penguin sledding and goofy boys with boomerangs. But it does, and you don't have to look further than the tales of Ba Sing Se to understand why. Thank you.